Rahmanir Raheem, Ati Allah, Ati Rasul wa Ulul Amri minkum. And always a reminder for myself, and I'm the Qiraji so da'if of miskeen, of zalim, of jahar, and but for the grace of Allah that we are still in existence. Alhamdulillah. InshaAllah, we have any questions for tonight? As salaamu alaykum, Sayyidi. Wa alaykum salaam wa rahmatullah. Sayyidi, you had mentioned that purple light is associated with the rizq. What is the reality behind the blue light? Blue light is a is an ocean of power, inshaAllah. And uh, these these colors may mean many different things. So, for for one understanding, it's an ocean of power, and there are certain beings that have a, a blue light, and their their the reality is a bluish color, inshaAllah. As salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Wa alaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah Sayyidi in tafakkur do awliya remember their experience in timelessness and does it affect the physical body at all? Do awliya remember their state in timelessness? Yeah everything that they do they remember and it, like it's burnt into their soul that it's of an ancient reality. So whatever they do of their tafakkur, their contemplation and whatever experiences, difficult to describe but they reach a state in which they forget very little. So forgetfulness is, is, a, is, a, is a dunya level where people forget things and mainly because shaitan wants them to forget. So shaitan causes people to forget so that they can continuously repeat the same actions and forget that they did this and that was wrong or, or whatever. But a state of forgetfulness in a higher level of consciousness there's is no real state of forgetting but there's forgiving. So whatever they're aware of they, they remember it but they forgive and they move forward. But forgetfulness is a, is a, is a, I don't want to use the wrong word but it's a… Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. As Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. Is a state, is a different state but when there's a higher level of consciousness and higher level of training then they have to rise above forgetting. They know what Allah doesn't like, they know what they're not supposed to do. And they can't forget that they, they did that so they remember, they repent, they move forward, they forgive. So that there has to be something different, a different understanding of, of a state of, of not forgetting, inshaAllah. <coughs> mm, as salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa uh, Mawlana described that the reality of soil is a Muhammadan reality. Is that the earthly equivalent to the black hole in that it annihilates and resurrects that which enters it? Is there a connection? You yeah, think we have that in the meditation book that the concept of, of the black hole is exactly like that soil that anything that enters into it is going to annihilate it. So most of science sees only looking at the soil, oh my gosh you put the seed in the soil and it's just gone, what happened? 
But the next phase when they continue to look is that something begins to grow. So the fana, the same concept and the black hole is a state of fana in which everything annihilates but it doesn't come up on the same side, it comes from a different direction through the existence. One thing that is annihilated then is resurrected in an ocean of baqa in which Allah brings it about as a new creation. So anything that moves towards the Muhammadan light it has to lose its, its individuality and move into the reality of Muhammadun Rasulullah Although it is already a Muhammadan light but it has too much of its own understanding of itself. So its annihilation is when the self of it is annihilated and the pure reality of Muhammadun Rasulullah is, is resurrected within it. That's why on the Isra in the presence of all the Prophets they're all Muhammadan lights but they have of themselves still within their being. As soon as they make their tashahud in the state of reality in the presence of Prophet means they all vanished. As soon as they bore witness they vanished into the light of Muhammadun Rasulullah And as a result they come back in a Muhammadan dress, in a Muhammadan reality. So alhamdulillah, inshaAllah. Mm. As salaamu alaykum Shaykh Walaykum as salaam I remember you telling us that Shaykh Nazim was giving his secret or trust of tariqah back to Imam Ali alayhi salam. Is there only one secret or multiple secrets? Yeah, Mawlana Shaykh knows best but what the meaning of that and we have that in our Nadi Ali that in the end times that the Amanat has to be held by Asadullah al the victorious lion of Allah There is no one that can handle that trust. And whatever trust the tariqahs have they are been put back into the hands of Imam Ali salam to give to his descendant Imam Mahdi salam. So the full trust, the full reality is in the hands of Imam Ali And minor trusts and secrets and realities then alhamdulillah whatever Mawlana Shaykh dispersed, he dispersed. But the, the one whom is supporting the tariqah is Imam Ali Sahib al-Imdad. Everyone else plays the roles they play but the, the power of it and the trust of it is from flowing from the heart of Imam Ali and the one whom responsible to keep it so that no man falls. So that's something that nobody can reach to that understanding and uh, its safeguard is Asadullah al-Qalib, the one whom Allah created for the purpose of safeguarding Islam and that he will turn that reality into the hands of Imam Mahdi It's full reality, whatever that may encompass that is something that not imaginable. But the one whom is supporting all the tariqahs and all these realities then is Imam Ali And that's why it's, it's of uh, immense, immense importance to have that veneration and that love. So the love and respect for tariqahs in one place but the love and respect for Imam Ali Salaam is something completely different. That's something that has an immense power, immense love, immense immense mercy from Prophet inshaAllah. That love leads us to then to the love of Ahlul Bayt, the love of all the holy companions and lends the heart for the arrival and the love and ishq for Sayyidina Mahdi so that that one whom loves Imam Ali more than they love themselves, their heart leans towards that understanding, that love and that ishq for Imam Mahdi inshaAllah. So all of that is, is, is immense in the ocean of muhabbat inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam Are any of the jinns 
In our technology, mu'min jinn? In our technologies? I would imagine many because how, how could… there are mu'min scientists and there are awliya amongst them also because Allah described in Pharaoh's court that we have from our servant amongst the court of Pharaoh. And the purpose of that servant was to moderate Pharaoh. So again understanding is that the height of black magic and the height of witchcraft because the Pharaonic and Egyptian magic is the most severe. So those same descendants run the earth now, right? We call the Pharaonic bloodline. They, they run the earth now, those families that run the earth they're all related to Pharaoh. So their magic is a strong magic and Allah described in the time of Sayyidina Musa that we had from one of our… from one of our servants for an understanding, Allah's servants are everywhere <laughs> and they serve a role that only Allah knows. I'm sure they don't make themselves known because their image and appearance would not be of what we would think. So a Pharaoh's magician being a believer he must have looked like the magicians but his heart was inclined towards Allah His role was to continuously make Pharaoh that, um, okay don't, don't be so upset, maybe he means this, maybe he means that to give and counsel Pharaoh to be a little bit more cooler and moderate when dealing with the, uh, Sayyidina Musa so there must be everyone, there must be Allah's servants everywhere, Allah doesn't leave shaitan to himself nor any of his vices and, and machinery and, and awliya are even using these technologies to counter shaitan. So whatever shaitan is hoping he's doing he plans, Allah plans better. That's why I said everybody get out, make a profile not from their names and their faces but a profile with the… Tariqah names, Muhammadan way names, uh, anything and keep bombarding, taking the videos, put in three minute clips, put 60 minute clips and start sending it everywhere. Because if 600 profiles are made and, and 600 profiles are, are posting two, three times a day then you can imagine tens of thousands of posts go out. So it would be a huge, huge sort of accomplishment and the same with sharing links and everything that we're doing is to do that same understanding, is to spread that knowledge, spread that light and when we understand the concept of light and darkness, you can have a room with 10,000 sins and imagine it's immensely dark like darkness beyond darkness. But what is the miraculous nature of light? If you go in that one room with all its immense darkness and just light up the darkness, light up with one candle, that one candle and the reality of light is enough to what? It lit up the darkness. Means all it needs is just one, one light to go in and immense power of light is that it lights up whatever is dark. That light is enough to direct people to the light. So wherever darkness is thinking that it has overtaken an area, it's immensely important for us to light up the darkness. That's why we say, take these Muhammadan teachings, take these videos, take these articles, take these things and you're throwing light into these dark, dark realities, into these dark places where shaitan is, is using these to destroy people, uses social media to destroy people. And all it takes is to light up the darkness and the, la the rest is for Allah how He wants to disperse that light and who will be affected by it. And inevitably there are people who are scrolling through all the darkness and extreme badness and it only takes one, one person to see and say, oh, what was that? Well, what was that? And then they look again, then they try to study it, understand it and it was enough to bring a light into somebody's heart and a light that comes in with a light of hope and could change somebody's life and direction and, and purpose in life. So alhamdulillah in these very, very dark times 
to sit and have done nothing then we can't say that we were oppressed. Allah, Allah will say that, why did you think you were oppressed? You didn't even do anything. You sat and allowed the oppression. So the one whom is oppressed is the one whom stood up and tried to do something positive. In the face of all this negativity, Ya Rabbi I spoke. In the face of all of this we taught, in the face of all of this we fed. So all these actions then the shaykh is asking the students whom follow him, not other students, they can do whatever they want and whatever they think works for them or do nothing and think that that works for them, is the ones whom follow the shaykh is also then do the same thing, take the teaching, propagate it, take the links, propagate it. And alhamdulillah we light up the darkness until Allah says, it's enough. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah Sayyidi, what is the best adab when dealing with people that are very ego heavy, people that we cannot avoid? Yes, yeah, silence, we talked about that last week, is to remain silent. That when their ego is, is too confrontational, their characters are, are, are too aggressive because egos then are very aggressive. It's to take a path of humility and silence and there's a talk last week uh, like a chess game, you know where you're going to go and you know the discussions are not going to be for Allah, you're not going to convert shaitan. If you know the person is heavy on their ego then again the, the soul is innocent but the person has a big shaitan on them. So every time you think, oh maybe I'll convert them or teach them or do like that, that's a shaitan, you're not going to teach shaitan anything, he's going to flip you in two seconds. So the best is just to keep a silence and to keep a path in which I have wudu, I keep my taweez and, and Allah didn't say confront shaitan but seek refuge in me, for a'uzu billahi min shaitanir rajeem. Allah never told anyone confront shaitan, that's why the, the people who go rambling and bambling at the parks in the UK and, and screaming at other people and Allah didn't tell anyone go after shaitan, Allah told them seek refuge in me from shaitan. So it means these bad characteristics and, and bad actions and bad arguments has nothing to do with Islam. They actually broke the first, first, first rule of, A'uzu billahi min shaitanir rajeem. Allah knows the power He gave to shaitan and He said, seek refuge in me, run to me, leave shaitan alone. I have to deal with him, not you. So that'll be in everything that we do if we're going to try to be successful in this struggle and in this difficulty inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Do the 360 idols in Mecca correspond to 360 degrees of a circle and is this rotational principle of consciousness the journey of the soul to learn about the heart of all things? Yeah, I think there's some added words in there but Better just to ask about the 360 points because you may link some philosophies with the different realities that the, the different things, different understandings. But the 360 points are important because there are 360 points on the body and there are 360 latayas on the body. There are 40 sets of nine. So the, the Hindu practices, they focus on the nine points on the endocrine, endocrine system. So they run from the skull all the way down to the lowest level near the buttocks. Those are nine points that they focus on and they go around the world teaching how to open this energy and to how to open your energy, kundalini, whatever they want to call it. And tariqah and Sufism and Prophet brought for us the nine points on the chest. So these are the nine that control the soul. Because those require heaven's permission and because the security is so intense, because the power is so magnificent. Allah is going to make sure that those people are clean, purified and that they meet the security requirements. As a result those are the tariqahs, those whom their heart is for the Divinely Presence 
and under the authority of Sayyidina Muhammad So then that's why the tariqahs are based on that, if the one whom controls the heart controls the kingdom. But the one who controls his endocrine controls nothing, that's only dunya. So the image that we have in the meditation books and everything about the man, the universal being that stands and there's a circle around that being is the symbol that this whole creation is inside one being whose light and soul is called Muhammadun Rasulullah So before I can understand that reality I have to know my reality. So I have to seek and know myself to reach towards that universal self. So then this 360 points then we have the meditation, we make the, the connection through the heart. As soon as you're connecting through the heart the heart connection is then beginning to cleanse all of these points. That's why the one whom controls the, the headquarters controls everything. So if you imagine like there are apps for all sorts of things around your building. You have an app for the alarm, you have an app for your internet, you have an app for your computer. But imagine if there's a central app that controls all those apps, that it goes in and it controls the app for the alarm, it controls the app for, for the camera, it controls everything. So the, the, the system that controls every single point is the heart because that's the throne of the Divine. I'm not on heaven and I'm not on earth, I'm on the heart of my believer. So the one whom Allah gives an access to the heart codes means they have been given the keys of the kingdom. So when Allah gives to them their key, in essence He's given them now keys to the kingdom. That's why it's so difficult to achieve because Allah is granting that within your heart you reach to us and when you reach to us then you have access to everything. So the training was always then the heart, so it's the most difficult to clean, to perfect the character, to base itself on humility. So then the, 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 the awliya have little king, keys to the kingdom and they see them as keys. They have the rizq of the students, they have the openings of the students, so they're they're like somebody on a keychain with huge like all <laughs> millions of keys. So as a result when they make their meditation and make all their spiritual practices then the shaykh has to open those locks. I mean so they're now going for headquarters so we don't deal with all the other elements. Why do you have to focus on, on the lataif of your spine, focus on the lataif of the crown? Why do you have to focus on this lataif and that lataif? All of those are wasting time because if, if your crown chakra is beginning to open but your heart is dirty, nothing going to come from that, just illusions. So then the tariqah cuts all those and says, no focus on your heart, make the connection with the heart. The shaykh has to be in the connection, as a result the shaykh is signing off for the connection. That the shaykh's soul is strongly connected, the person is, is receiving like a security download. If you're not able to connect with the shaykh it's like you didn't uh, have your, your security clearance. Only through the connection with the shaykh, the soul of the shaykh is an encrypted light being sent into the soul of the student. As a result these are opening up the different keys and the student doesn't have to be aware of anything, they're just aware of trying to connect their heart. So they come in with those keys that the connection is established, the connection is secure, then the shaykh's lights begin to unlock whatever system that Allah wants to unlock, Prophet wants to unlock upon that soul. And then their system is then aligned according and attuned to according to the state of the shaykh. And that's what's called the attunement we talked about before. So the encryption is already happening with light. 
Only now people understand that if you try to say that 30 years ago people were lost, that's why they never talked about it. Now it's very familiar, so it's a system of remotes. There's a master remote, slave remote. So when you want to program your garage opener or TV remote you get a universal remote control and, and the universal remote like the teacher comes and teaches the student is, don't pay attention to what you think and what you think the button should be, we're going to start now programming you. As a result when these programs are coming in later as the student is developing they'll begin to understand or oh, if I press here this happens, if I press here this happens as an example. They'll, they'll see that their buttons are rigged according to the attunement with the shaykh. That's why we don't go other places where they start to retune you. If you go to this acupressure and, and other states of people they may attune you and think everything is wrong because they've never seen this type of programming. They're definitely not at that state of understanding and they can deprogram people where they feel oh they lost their entire connection. And that's the danger, you don't go anywhere with, with the connection, you just make your connection and, <clears throat> and have good character and the foundation of humility so that these lights and these realities can be dressed upon the servant inshaAllah. Uh, as salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa Sayyidi, during meditation energy came and forehead contract and releases and sensation on the face, what is the reality behind this? Nothing, energy on the face contracting and, and energy practices. So there's energy coming at, at all places, if there's the lataif of the, of the head, the face, if there's a cleansing within the energy or cleansing of that area, again different, different realities. So anytime we meditate and if there's like a a difficulty somewhere and we feel an energy coming to that then that's a something being either relieved, something being opened, it can be multi-faceted reasons, many different reasons for every experience. The importance of everything is that did you make the madad and in the madad you were connected with the shaykh the rest is not your business. Don't try to understand everything because how could there be just one understanding for everything? It's not like vanilla, shaykh I tasted this, what is this? Vanilla. Oh, what was this shaykh? The vanilla. So it means there's a reason for everything, many different reasons. So imagine somebody having something like trying to possess their head, they meditate one time and they feel like a flush of energy came and sort of clean something out, well that would be a cleaning experience. Or they meditated and they tried to focus on the, the nazar of the shaykh and that lataif was being opened. So everything is going to be of different realities. The most important is that I connect with the shaykh and I'm connected with the shaykh and I'm asking for the madad and support and that I tell myself I'm nothing. If I told myself nothing like the beginning of the talk then why would it matter what it was? Because if we tell ourselves, oh it was this and that then the nafs is trying to say, did I like reach something new? then it become harder to become humble. So in our humility we said to ourselves when we're meditating, I'm nothing, of course it's nothing, I'm no one, I'm nothing. And energy would come, experience would come and I'm nothing out of I'm nothing. I'm not letting these experiences to make me think I'm something, I'm asking to reach to a state of nothingness in which I want to be entered into your oceans of power. And that was the only thing important is that to reach to a state of nothing to enter into an ocean of power. But I say, okay, say, how, what was this light? How was this experience? What was that? Then that becomes nafsani because it's, oh, was that like an opening? Oh, I reached a new maqam and then it become harder for a person to, to achieve anything because now they're building themselves up instead of sort of taking and, and, and breaking the person down, they're trying to build themselves up. Say the a similar question, but they were asking about uh, uh, taste in the mouth, salty taste, fresh taste versus stale taste. Same answer? 
Same thing. Same thing, yeah. Don't, don't worry about any taste. Meditate uh, and you feel a heat, lock your tongue to the roof of your mouth, breathe, connect the heart with the shade and that there's no taste and just enter into ocean of nothingness and power and qudra and put some zamzam water where you are and ask that water to be blessed and drink that water and at the end of the meditation have some sweets so that your nafs didn't go crazy and, and start to go all over the place and you come out with anger because the nafs is, is, is been burnt through these spiritual practices. So you try to give something sweet after your meditation and again telling ourselves, I'm nothing, I'm nothing, I'm nothing, inshaAllah. So the people are asking for bayat. Bayat inshaAllah, yeah. InshaAllah we'll do the bayat and then start the khatam inshaAllah. You know what, yeah have it here on this phone too, okay. <clears throat> Fawza, inshaAllah we're making intention for bayat in Ashbandiyat al-Aliyya under Sultan al-Awliya Ma Shaykh Abdul Faiz al-Daghestani, Sultan Shaykh Muhammad Nazim Haqqani, Ma Shaykh Muhammad Adil under the barakah and the blessings of awliyaullah Mawlana Shaykh Hisham Kabani, Shaykh Adnan Kabani inshaAllah that their nazar and Allah's grace be upon us, the love of Sayyidina Muhammad be upon us. The Holy Sahabi be upon us, the Ahlul Bayt be upon us inshaAllah. Fa'awzu billahi min ash-shaitanir rajeem, Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem, Inna ladheena yubayyuna ka inna ma yubayyuna Allah, Yaad Allahi fawqa idihim, Faman naqawdu fa inna ma yaqoodu ala nafsi, wa man awfa bima ahad, alayhi Allah fa sayyidun ajrun adheem. Radith billahi rabban, Islami deenan wa bi Sayyidina wa Nabiyyana Muhammadun sallallahu alayhi wa sallam rasoolu wa Nabiyyun. Wa bi Qur'ani kitaban, wallahumma naqulu wakeel, walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Aqabinna bi Sayyidina Sultanul Awliya Ma Shaykh Muhammad Nazim Haqqani Shaykhuna wa Mushidina wa Ma'an Shaykh Muhammad Adil Shaykhuna wa Mushidina. Fi barakati Mawlana Shaykh Isham Kabani Shaykh Adnan Kabani, wallahumma naqulu wakeel. Allahu 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 Akbar Allahu 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 Akbar Allahu 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 Akbar Ya Rabbi Ya Allah fi barakat al-shahr al-mubarak shahr al-muharram fi barakat al-ashura Ya Rabbi fi barakat ahlillah wa ahl al-bayt al-karam Imam Ali, Imam al-Hasan, Imam Hussain Imam Zain al-Abideen, Usaidu wa Sadatina wa Siddiqeen al-Fatiha. Ilu Sharif al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam alayhi wa ashabi kiram wa ala mashayfeena fi tariqat al-Nashbandiyyat al-Aliyya Qasatan ruhi man tariqa qalta khaliqa shal Nashban Muhammad Uwaysi al-Bukhari Sultana Uliya Shaykh Abdul Faiz al-Daghestani, Tla Shaykh Muhammad Nazim Adil Hakkan, Mawlana Shaykh Hisham Kabani, Shaykh Adnan Kabani, Shaykh Muhammad Adil, Abdul Khaliq al-Khurshidawani, Sahib Zaman Sayyidina Muhammad al-Mahdi alayhi salam, Uruhullah Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam, Sayyifullah Sayyidina Ali salam, Thumma Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq, Sayyidina Ummah, Sayyidina Uthman, Imam al-Hasan alayhi salam, Imam al-Husayn alayhi salam, Sayyidatul Fatima al-Zah alayhi salam, Wa sayra wa sadatina wa shahadai Karbala alayhim as salam wa sayra wa sadatina wa siddiqeena al-Fatiha.